Hi, Ray here. Today we're going to talk about making an underquilt for your camping chair. If that's something you might be interested in, stick around. A few months ago I went camping. It was pretty cool, I'd say in the 40s. Um, low 40s, rained most of the time, and we got ourselves a nice fire going, had a nice tarp, so we were staying dry and staying warm in the front. But what I noticed was my camping chair, which has a mesh back, I was getting cold on my back in this chair. So I thought I'd like to be able to insulate that a little bit. My first thought was, you know, I've got some Reflectix I'll just cut off a chunk of Reflectix and set it down in the chair and I can sit on that. And I thought, well, I probably won't be very comfortable, number one, and I might wind up sweating on the Reflectix. So I did away with that idea. Then I remembered that I had bought some of these Eddie Bauer down throws from Sam's. They're just a really light down throw. A lot of people have seen the ones that were made by Costco, but this was made by Sam's. Eddie Bauer down throw. Uh, one thing that I did notice after I got it at home is it's only 50 by 60. The ones that I got from Costco are 50 by 70. So this is really just a little bit too short for me. But I kept them anyway because I got them at the end of the season. I don't know, I paid $8 for them or something. So I bought a couple of them. Thought sooner or later I'd use it for a project. Well, I thought this would make a great underquilt. So I'm going to try to show you how I converted this into an underquilt uh, by cutting, sewing, and just playing around. So come along with me and I'll show you how I did this thing. Now sewing is far from a strong suit of mine, so I had to figure out how to make a pattern to start sewing this. So what I did was I turned the chair upside down and then I just took the quilt and started sliding it through so I felt like I got about as much as I needed. Then I started at the bottom. And I just went along with some binder clips. And I could clip it to the edge of the seat with just a little bit of rollover because I wanted some excess. Once I did it to the bottom, I could flip the chair up. See where I was on the top. You can kind of uh, come up the side, doing the same thing with the binder clip. Not leaving too much excess there, but enough to know that that was my corner that I had to go around. top, I rolled it over and put the clips on here the same way. Now, I'm putting this on here fairly loosely because I know that when I sit on it, when I sit on the seat, <clears throat> it's going to compress the down. So I wanted to make sure I had enough looseness under here so that when I sat on it, it didn't compress the down so much that it was taking all the insula insulative properties away. And I came back and I did the same thing to the last side over here. So now this gave me a general idea uh, about what size I needed. And with any luck, it's actually a little bit oversized. So at this point, 
what I did was I could take one of those marking pencils that you use for sewing, and I don't remember what you call them. And I can simply just mark along the edges here as to where I needed to be. Really, really be more concerned about the two long edges and what I had to cut down. Now those marks gave me a general idea of about how big I needed to cut the piece to cover that chair. Because I didn't want to cut in the middle of these patterns, so you see the sewing lines here that keep the down from moving around, I wanted to stay as close to one of those lines as I could um, so I would not lose too much down. And um, so if I had to error, I would err on the outside of the pattern here trying to stay close to one of the grid lines um, to avoid down loss. So I tried a test piece and tried to shake all the down that I could toward the bottom and then sew it and cut it but I think because of where their seams are along here some of the down was caught in the seam so I'm just going to try to double roll this and put another stitch down it real quick and see if that doesn't take care of the problem. So I was able just to uh, double roll that hem and it pretty much will eliminate the uh, down from being able to escape. What a mess. Didn't realize how messy this down was. Now something that I already learned is containing this down is really a mess. Even though I shook it all down and I pinned it, it still wants to come back into this gap here. My plan was to sew along here, cut it, and, and then roll, do a double roll on both of these ends here to contain the down, but I think what I'm going to have to do um, is I'm going to do one just quick seam along here, about a half inch from where they sewed the grid, and then I'm going to do another seam, um, probably about an eighth inch uh, from that, and I'm going to cut in between those, um, which should help contain that down a little bit more. And you can see that. They would sew down to a certain spot and then stop. So I really need to sew that little bit of the end there um, and to, just to try to make sure I don't have down leaking out of that because that's about almost an inch where they did not sew it. So now I've sewn that gap that they left in their grid and I'm going to have to come back and uh, now start sewing along the line where I originally wanted to sew on. So now I'll sew along the edge for the chair and the thing I've noticed is this stuff is really slick. And because I'm sewing through two pieces of material, it tends to want to move and not necessarily go through as straight as I'd like. So I have to kind of take my time. If you haven't figured it out already, sewing is not one of my strong points. I'll bring you back after I get this line sewed. So I thought what I would do would be just to run two seams very closely together and then cut in between them, but 
you know, I kind of thought I'm not going to be able to control this down no matter what I've done, what I do. So um, what I did was I ran one stitch, I've double rolled it and pinned it, and now I'm going to run another stitch down here, which should hold the down end like it did uh, on my little test piece. But man, I'll tell you what, down is a mess. If anybody's got any better ideas about how to do something like this, leave it in the comment below. But uh, I don't think you'll find me messing with down too much in the future. But we're going to get this project done. I guarantee it. sewing as close to the outside of that roll as I can to make sure that I catch the material that I rolled underneath because it's so slick you know I tried to some materials you can just do your double roll and then hold it and sew all your way down all the way down but with this stuff it's so slick you can't hold that roll so you have to pin it as you go all right, I'll get this piece done. I'll show you what it looks like. So I sewed that edge down. I think it actually looks pretty good. Here's the top side of it. And I think it'll do fine holding the down in there. So thinking about the next step now. So this time I did sew a line about an eighth inch from where the sewing was in the quilt and much better in terms of controlling that down. So we're sewing the last seam now. Get this done, then we're going to move on to the next step. Figure out how we're going to hold this thing under the seat like an underquilt. I've got some ideas and we'll talk about them when we get to that next step. So after cutting the small underquilt to the size that I wanted, I came back and I once again just clipped it back onto the chair. And it looks like it's about the right size for my needs but what I'm gonna have to figure out next here is that these legs have to be able to go up through the quilt before they're inserted into their holder on the chair so I'll have to do something here on the top and on the bottom such that the quilt will just slip down on here first and then I'll figure out how I'm going to anchor it to the top after that. So I think probably what I'll do is figure out about where I need to be, slice into my quilt, sew some grow grain around there um, in, in the slit in the quilt to support it uh, and protect the edge. And then I'll figure out my next step of how I'm going to hold it up with uh, some sort of elastic or shock cord of some kind. So by clipping the quilt back onto the back of the chair, I can feel where the legs need to protrude through the quilt. 
right there. Then I made a little mark such that I could cut a hole. And when I cut that hole, I also surrounded it with grow grain just for a little extra support. But in theory then, it should come through, the post should come through here and attach back to the chair while the under quilt is under the chair. So I'm gonna try that out. Okay, so that looks like it's gonna work. The under quilt is now under the chair. The leg goes through to hold the top of the chair up. So I think I can cut the other ones the same way and see if I can't get all four to fit as well. So to make those notches, I start by just cutting a hole straight through the quilt. I push the down as far in as I can, which isn't easy. It wants to keep coming out. But I push it down as far as I can. And then I'm just simply going to sew around that notch. Um, think of a buttonhole, I guess. Sort of like a buttonhole. I'm going to put this uh, grow grain on there just to tidy it up a little bit. And first thing you have to do once you cut it is just to melt the edges. So they'll stay intact. And then this will just fit on each side like this. And it'll fold over that crease and make that nice and neat and make sure that I hold that uh, make sure that I hold the down in there. I'll add two more pieces of grow grain on the top. So I'll put one here, I'll put a second piece on the other side and then two more small pieces on the top and I'll just sew those down. So that's looking much nicer already by adding the grow grain. That's where the hole will come through. And then what I'm going to do now is just put two small pieces on each side of the end here just to make sure that I've got some strength and structure. And the way I do that is I take a little bit of this two-sided sticky tape which is supposed to help with hemming or something I guess. I don't know. but. Put, just put that on your cloth like that and then peel off the top side. Then you can stick your little piece of grow grain on there just like that. Do the same thing to the other side and those will now stay in place while you're sewing them. It fits really well around the chair. There's a look from the underside. <clears throat> underside. So the next piece of this puzzle is how we want to add some shock cord or elastic of some kind on the corners here so it will stay on the chair unaided. So one thought is I could run shock cord all the way around much like you would do with a hammock under quilt but I don't want anything to be pulling it too tight up here that might make it too tight in the seat when you sit in it and compress all of the down. So I think what I might try to do is 
take a piece of elastic fabric and just join each corner like that and like that. I'll still have these tufts of cloth on the side here, but I'll either just leave those or cut them off. I'm not sure what to do with them yet, but uh, let's try some of that elastic and see how that works. Okay, so as you can see, I've attached three of the corners with this elastic cloth and it seems to be doing a good job of holding it snug around there like you would want to hold an under quilt. So I'm going to quickly show you how I marked this and sewed it on the last one here. You want the angle of your strap to be this way here. So you want to mark your edges the way your straight piece would go. So if it's coming this way, you want to mark this at 90 degrees and then you mark it down here at 90 degrees as well. So when you sew the straight edge of your strap here, it's going to be pointing that way and you have to sew the straight edge of the strap up there, the short straight edge. It's it's not as easy as it seems and when you take this off to go to sew it it's it's kind of weird the way it looks that you want to do it so I'm going to show you on this last one how I did it so hopefully this won't be too hard to see when you take it off you'll see that your lines are much further apart than you would have expected them to be and they're almost in the opposite angle that you would expect them to be but you have to remember that your corner is out that way so you're going to attach this one right here so I'm going to stick a pin where I want to attach that there then when you come over to the other side it's actually going to attach that way so that's where that little puff of corner was that you saw in the chair. So it's, it looks kind of strange when you try to attach them, um, but you just have to trust your mark and put it on the marks and pin them because that's where you want to attach it. So I pinned the one side, I'll leave this side loose for now, and I'll sew this side and then come back and sew the other side. Now this isn't under a tremendous amount of stress, so I'm going to sew just, just a couple of lines back and forth here to hold it on, back stitching to lock it. Once you've got that first line on there, take your pin out of the way. Just turn it maybe just a little bit. Back it up with a stitch this way. Turn a little bit back that way. And I really think that's enough to hold it. That's three stitch lines and as I said, this won't get much pressure. But it's hard to see the line on this fabric because it's a white line and it's really shiny fabric. But you're going to twist this around this way so it's lined up with the angle that you want. This is for the second one. Second end. And pin that so you're kind of at the angle you want. And then sew that as well. Alright, so put your under quilt on. It's an under quilt, so obviously it goes under your seat. Just put your little poles through the slots there. Then take the top. 
corner has to go under that elastic strap first, then on the pole. You get your top on, you move down to the bottom. I have found for some reason, as you probably know, these things are really tight to put on these chairs. But I have found for some reason if you do the top first and then the bottom, they'll go on just a little bit easier. Oops, I missed with that one. Okay. And then make sure, oh, forgot to put the strap through on that one. There we go. Strap through, quilt through. So that's how it looks when you fit it on there. These little corner tufts that I've talked about, I could sew those to make that a little bit tighter. Um, but, you know, I think for now it's easy enough just to tuck them under like that. Don't worry about it. Fits pretty well. The, uh, the down is not too compacted at the bottom, so I left enough room for when the seat stretches. It doesn't ruin the insulated properties of the down. It's still got room back there. I took this thing outside. It's uh, 34 degrees Fahrenheit out there today, which is about one degree Celsius, cloudy day. Uh, I had a polyester t-shirt on, uh, just a, like a Henley cotton tee on, and a Ghost Whisperer jacket. Uh, if any of you know about a Ghost Whisperer jacket, it'll take you down to uh, easily 30 degrees if you're active um, but at 35 degrees it's not quite warm enough uh, but that's what I wore had my hood up had jeans uh, uh, no base layer under my jeans and I just went I sat outside for 10 minutes uh, in the chair what I found was that um, where I had the under quilt I was completely fine I was plenty warm um, I could really tell the difference between where the underquilt stopped and I just had the ghost whisperer jacket on my back because that actually started to get pretty cold. So I stayed out there for about 10 minutes, uh, felt perfectly warm on this chair. Uh, then I took the quilt, went back out for 10 minutes and what a difference. I mean that mesh, you could just, you could just feel the cold air coming through that mesh and of course the Ghost Whisperer is a down jacket, so once you once you sit down, you're compressing uh, the down in the jacket, and it's losing its insulative properties. So my back really got cold, and my butt got much colder through my jeans on the on the raw fabric of the seat as well. So I'd have to say uh, it's a pretty successful little project. You can buy these underquilts from REI. I think they're. 30 35 dollars or something like that but if you want a fun little project to do uh this was this was interesting and fun to learn something um one thing i did learn is i'm not messing around with down i used to think once in a while maybe i'd like to make an under quilt that ain't happening down is just too darn messy to work with so hope you enjoyed the video thanks for watching i'd love it if you like the video and subscribe i'd like any comments you might have with regard to how i could have done this better or differently particularly in how i might have controlled the down better than i did um, other than that thanks for watching i appreciate it